Sorry? What do you feel your opportunities right now? Yeah, that last Hopefully good. <laughs> I don't really, obviously we don't really know what they're going to decide, but um, just trying to put my best foot forward every day and be competitive in practice and just control what I can control. And hopefully it turns out the way I hope it does, but we'll see what they decide. So it's been good so far. What's been the biggest positive you've taken to this camp? What did you learn that you maybe didn't know before you came here? I think it's just um, a level of professionalism around here in this organization. And I know that's going to help me in my career going forward, um, just learning from the best. So I've been really appreciative of that opportunity to do that. You have to be careful that these star days that we have, Kelly <laughs> Quickly and Candace Parker, yeah. players like that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have moments where I'm just like, wow, this is amazing that I have this opportunity. But at the end of the day, the competitive side of me comes on and I just turn it on for practice. So. Um, at the end of the day, you got to just go out there and play and not think about that kind of stuff. So thanks. Uh, long time to see. Um, Hello. <laughs> um, what do you think you've improved on the most since coming to training camp so far? I think honestly, it's more just about like learning how this guy want to play and that kind of thing, like the system. Um, and like I said earlier, just the professionalism that they come to practice with every day, they get their work in, they come to practice, they compete, and that's how the day goes. So it's just really fun to be around. Um, I've definitely learned a lot and just the way that they play is so fun. It's fast. It's team basketball, which is the best kind of basketball in my opinion. So it's just been really fun. What's been the best advice you've received since coming here? I think the, just making the next right play, like not getting overwhelmed with anything, just doing what you're supposed to do, taking a possession at a time, and good things will happen. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Hi, uh, Catherine. Keep Hi. you really excited around here last year. Obviously, they won the title. How did you kind of experience that? You know, did you watch around here? Did you go to any of the kind of celebrations? Well, I watched everything from the comfort of my family's living room. Um, which was amazing as a Chicago kid. It's really special to see uh, your city win a championship and definitely motivating to eventually want to be on that roster and be part of it. So that's been really exciting. Hi. Hello. Uh, for a player like you who played in the league a little bit, also some time overseas as well, for you to come back and get an opportunity like this, where do you feel like you've improved most to stay on mm -hmm. with the sky like this? I think experience means everything in pro basketball it's just like you can't I, like you can't emulate playing professional at this level uh in like individual training sessions so being overseas and playing against great competition playing against WNBA players it just brings you a certain level of confidence like I'm doing it overseas I'm more than capable of playing against them and having success so why can't I do that and bring that to the sky so I've just come into camp honestly really confident that I've had experiences in this league and against players like this um, and it honestly like as a competitor it just makes me excited to be in those opportunities and give myself a chance to show that I can really contribute on a roster. Hey Kathleen uh, being from here what was your relationship like with the sky mm -hmm. growing up? Yeah, I, I went to games as a kid with some of my best friends and I would watch Allie play at DePaul all the time. So I definitely grew up around it and was constantly soaking in Chicago basketball, whether it was Sky or Bulls or Allie at DePaul or anything like that. So um, it's just honestly surreal at times to have this uniform on. So I don't want to take it off. <laughs> what do you think the uh, the TV deal with Marquee may mean for the next generation of mm -hmm. uh, Chicago uh, yeah, it's so exciting just to see that times are catching up with how great the game is for women and any exposure for us is awesome and it's extra cool. I'm a Cubs fan. So seeing that Marquis is going to be doing that is really special. So appreciate them and their support for the game. And we're definitely trending in the right direction. Thank you. Have to ask you this. You've won two state championships here in Illinois. <laughs> yes. What would it mean to you to be on the team that wins the WNBA championship? 
I, I don't even know how I would be able to describe those emotions. Just it's like your whole life would build up to that moment. That's what you work towards every day. Like, obviously I'm just trying to be on the roster. And then once you get to that point, obviously a championship is that goal. So just being a part of that would be really special and winning's fun. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. energy high and um you know keep things flowing from from a bench standpoint you know kind of give us that kick as you know whatever it be six seven man so what has james wade been telling you um just as someone that could potentially back up to be a copper i mean is there been anything that he's been any advice he's given you or anything that he's been wanting to work on uh, in your few days in camp so far yeah i think i think right now we're just he's just trying to fill me out a little bit you know i think uh, i've only been here what four days, five days, um, you know, so right now I think he's just saying, you know, keep being aggressive, keep attacking, just use everything that I have. And, um, you know, I'm sure as we get closer and closer to, you know, game, we'll, we'll have, you know, more detailed conversations. How difficult has it been switching gears from playing overseas <laughs> to now you're competing for, to be on the WNBA roster? Yeah, it's, it's a lot different, obviously, you know, your role overseas is so different, you know, than coming back, you know, to the league, but it's awesome. You know, it's a super cool opportunity. Um, you know, and I think it's one of those things that can only help you and, you know, further your career. So it's, it's been an awesome process. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, of course. For those Scott fans that haven't seen you play, when you're hitting on all cylinders, what does it look like? Um, it's a lot of scoring just in a lot of different ways. You know, I'm aggressive. I can drive. I can shoot. Um, you know, we've been talking about posting up some, you know, maybe guarding the four. So, um, you know, I bring the ball to the floor sometimes. So a lot of these conversations are literally kind of playing roles like one through four. Um, you know, so it's it's doing that and defending everybody in that same position. Um, but like I said, it's it's hitting threes, pull up shots, uh, you know, attacking the basket. So it's it's a lot of different things. Of course. I know you've only been here for four days, but what part of your game specifically do you think lends well to being in the sky system? 
Um, I think just being able to attack and kick, you know, attack and distribute the ball, but also be able to, you know, to hit the knockdown shot. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about not shooting those long twos and getting behind the three-point line, shooting threes. So, um, you know, I think that's something that works really well. And, you know, just, I think just the basketball IQ I have, being able to, um, you know, create shots and, and just, you know, you be smart on the floor. Okay, you won a championship with South Carolina. You know, just can you sort of talk about your feelings watching South Carolina win that and sort of program? Yeah, obviously there's a big sense of pride. You know, you're super excited. Um, I think that team, they fought through so much, you know, fought through so much adversity. It's, I couldn't imagine what it's like playing through the whole COVID situation. Um, you know, so I think they, they kind of had a target on their back a bit, but I think they handled it, you know, immeasurably well. So super proud of them, you know, obviously super proud to play at South Carolina, um, you know, for them to keep adding to it. So, you know, that's, that's part of it. That's why you go to these places and these schools. So um, happy for coach, happy for the staff. And, you know, hopefully we can keep building on it and, you know, people see the program that, you know, coach is building and um, they hopefully want to keep building on it. Hey, Kayla, um, you know, with everything that happened with uh, Britt and Brad in that situation, does that change your thoughts on playing overseas next year? Is that, is that something you thought about? You know, I think there's there's so many different challenges that come with playing overseas. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things you, you kind of got to weigh your options a little bit. Uh, you know, I definitely think it's something that sits in the back of your mind a little bit, um, but Overseas, especially now with just the new CBA, the new rules, it's it's I think it's something that'll be weighed once that process, once we get, you know, closer to that time, that'll be something I, you know, sit down and talk to my agent about and and what we feel is the best thing to do. But yeah, it's it's definitely something that sits in the back of your mind for sure. Kayla, um, has James talked to you at all about um, playing outside? We just talked about how you might back up to be a copper. Has he talked to you about other roles that you might play? Like, you know, you've had experience playing in or defending or is this something that he's talked to you at all, at all about just given that in such a short period of time? Yeah, a little bit. You know, we're trying to, like I said, with it being such a short amount of time, I'm trying to, you know, get the playbook and get to know everybody and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, we've had little small conversations just about, hey, you know, maybe playing some spot minutes out of four, things like that. You know, hey, if you get the rebound, you can bring the ball up the floor. So, um, like I said, we're trying to jam so much in, in such a small amount of time, but I think we're doing a good job at kind of handling all of it. Did you have interest from other WNBA teams? And if so, like, why did you pick the spot sky? Um, I think for me, it's just, yeah, I had interest from other teams. I think, you know, Sky just showed the most interest. And, um, you know, I think just the conversations having from my agent with coach, it just was probably the best fit for me, you know, not only for this point, but, you know, potentially for years to come. So that's what, you know, we were most excited about. Yeah, thank you. We have one person on Zoom. Rafiq, if you want to unmute yourself. This is Rafiq about that sports talk. I mean, as it was mentioned earlier, it was not too, it was like a few months moved from winning the national championship with South Carolina. Now you're on a Hello, Can you hear me now? I I can't understand what you're saying. By the only one. Okay. I'm trying to <laughs> say like it? Oh, okay. <laughs> well okay, what I'm trying I'm trying to ask you is um I mean, a few months ago, you were a national champion with South Carolina. Now you're playing on the defending WBA champion. Do you know? I, I can you guys hear him? Excuse me. Playing at South Carolina now, being in the W, is that the question? Yes. 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 That's the question. That's the question. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I think South Carolina is a place that prepares you for the league. Um, you know, having Coach Daly, who played in the league herself and, you know, did everything that you could possibly imagine doing, um, you know, she definitely prepares you to play on this stage. So um, I'm fortunate to have been in a situation where I was able to play under Coach Daly and, you know, play in the SEC and, you know, get ready for opportunities like this. And how much have you looked up to Kansas Park or, or as a player and a human being in the WNBA? Oh, definitely. You know, with her being, she's been in my life a, a long, long time. Um, you know, so that's always somebody I, I pick her brain about different stuff. You know, we talk about, 
endless things, you know, from life to basketball. So, you know, to be in the in the same places her every day, you know, it's going to be really, really cool. Appreciate you insight and good luck. Eric Wilson, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, good afternoon. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear him better, I think. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to know, I know this is, we keep talking about a short amount of time with you being with the sky. What is the one aspect of your game that complements this team? Um, I think just, you know, the basketball IQ I have, um, you know, being able just to, to think at a high level. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about shooting threes and, and things like that. So I worked a lot on a lot of different stuff last summer, but um, I think just being able to attack the basket, you know, find the open man, you know, hit the open three. I think that's something that, you know, complements this team well. Any more questions for Kayla? Thank you, Kayla. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Years. You know, obviously, this team's a one every other year, kind of. What's the big difficulty with that? And obviously, play it year round, you know, that as well. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of difficulties. I think it's, you know, trying to stay healthy for two years straight, um, trying to play at a high level for two years, knowing that, you know, you're going to have the target on your back for that second year and knowing everybody's kind of gunning for you. Um, maybe what's unique about us is that our, our first year wasn't like necessarily a championship regular season. So um, we didn't really play like at a high level the entire year. So we just have to do it one out of the two years, <laughs> but still obviously play at a high level for the, for the entire playoff run. So um, we know it's difficult, but we're ready for the challenge. And obviously that's the, the main goal, but we're just focusing on every day getting better and um, yeah, just staying in the moment. Uh, I believe you left Russia earlier this year around the same time as Brittany and you guys played on the same team. Obviously some big news today. Um, I don't know if you saw it. But I saw it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of what are your thoughts on the situation? It sounds like you guys are able to talk a little bit more freely about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw that this morning and I was just so happy to know that we don't have to wait till the trial date and hopefully they can try to figure something out, some kind of swap or just do what they do to just whatever it takes to get her home. So. Um, I'm sure that was really good news for her family as well. I've been thinking about it the last two, two months, and I just hope this is a step in the right direction to her getting back home. What, what was, what's the last two months been like for you? What was it like for you and Courtney leaving? And, you know, I'm sure that there's, there's some fear there as well. Yeah, it was, uh, for the most part, this season was pretty normal, like every other year. It was kind of the last two weeks we were there that was different in terms of, you know, the sanctions being put on Russia. So that part was stressful, just not knowing if there would be flights home or, you know, bank accounts that they would work or, you know, different protests around the city. It was just the unknown of what was going to happen. So I think once it got to that point and our State Department said, you know, Americans should consider leaving immediately, that's when we were kind of like, all right, we, I think we got to go. And, you know, our family members and friends were just kind of texting us nonstop and really scared. So... Um, yeah, it was a hard decision because, you know, life was okay there and obviously we weren't feeling like super in danger, but it was, a, it was the right decision and, uh, yeah, it was felt right once we got home. Uh, just to follow up real quick, is this going to change like kind of your, 
I don't know if you're planning on playing next year overseas. Is this, would this change kind of your feelings on that? Obviously? Yeah, for sure. It definitely would. How are you? <laughs> it definitely changes that. Obviously, when there's a war going on, it's, you know, you don't want to think too far ahead, but definitely doesn't look like rushes in the future. And then, sorry, can you just sort of elaborate on your relationship with Brittany? Just sort of you guys as teammates, how long you guys been on each other, sort of what that's like? Yeah, we were teammates overseas for the last three years, so um, it was definitely tough for us to not have her there every single day. She's been there for seven, seven, eight years maybe. So um, we all kind of felt it was just weird. It was, you know, very sad to not see her every day. She's just someone who's always happy, always coming in the gym. Just she's full of life, you know. Obviously, she's six eight, but her personality is even bigger than that. So it's something you definitely miss, and it was just kind of a hole in our team for a while there. Um, you just kind of feel like part of you is missing when she's not there. So it was it was really hard. Ali, you're coming off one of the most efficient three-point shooting seasons on any player in WNBA history from the amount of like, the volume of threes that you took last year. Um, are, is that like, are you trying to, um, I mean, you're, I'm assuming that Julie's going to come in and play a huge role this year. Um, you're, you're not going to have to rely on you as much. Are you kind of excited to be able to like take some, like not play like 30 minutes a game potentially and like, help get this team to help you? Yeah, I think it would be great for the team if we can all be, have a little bit of rest during the season, especially a season where we're playing 30 something games in 90 days. So um, to be deeper, to have a good bench, I think it's going to be huge for us, especially if you want to make another playoff run. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so what can you just say about the depth of this team? Because it feels like, I mean, what you can really go one through nine, one through 10, yeah. and you wouldn't see a huge drop off. Yeah. Um, on paper, and I really like the experience we have. Um, obviously, Dana coming back for year two and Ruthie year three, just knowing the system. We all know each other. It doesn't feel like it's like a new team by any means. I know Julie and Emma are new, but they're so experienced in the Euro League. It's there's they're, the, they're, they're those kind of players you can just kind of put in there and um, they just know how to play basketball the right way. So it's really easy. Speaking of Dana, what's been the biggest improvement from, from last year, you know, in the middle, being traded in the middle of the season in Chicago yeah. to now where she, she looks super comfortable. Yeah. What's been the biggest improvement you've seen I think it's just experience and just knowing, you know, what we need from her on this team, uh, being that calm to come in in the second group and uh, not just score. I think she's finding ways to like get in there and make passes out. So I think that's like a huge improvement for her. I saw in a couple of the preseason games. Um, she's really quick, so I think that she can create not only for herself, but she can create for her teammates. So I think that's been the biggest thing. No problem. Hi, Ali. Um, so you added a third of the finals MVP to the roster in the offseason. Can you just talk a little bit about what Emma has brought to the table so far? Yeah, I mean, she's one of the best fours in the world. She's um, she's just a very good decision maker. Uh, she's a knockdown shooter. She can make shots from anywhere, but she can also make good decisions with the ball. I think when you have post players like Candace and her, the ball always goes through the post player. So when you have quick decision makers like them, it just makes the offense so smooth. So just to have another, you know, player like that, to, whenever you reverse the ball, you're always confident in her decision making. It's it's just huge for us. And even defensively, I think she's underrated. She's one of one of the probably best um, pick and roll defenders in the post. She has really good hands and good anticipation. So um, she's just easy to play with. So it's it's been a smooth transition. <laughs> And what is what? How has the feeling in camp this year compared to the feeling last year? Um, I would say just having us here. A lot of a lot of the times we don't come till maybe two days ago because of uh, overseas. So just to be able to be here and um, just get more reps with each other and have that experience. Like I said, like Dana year two, Ruthie year three. Um, just having one more year of experience together just makes it feel more comfortable. Thank you. Uh, Allie, I'm just sort of curious to hear about it. You sort of hear about a championship hangover. You guys already considered pretty experienced, have a lot of 
experience. How do you guys feel like the team's at from a conditioning standpoint going into the year? How do we feel about what? From a conditioning standpoint, conditioning. How, do you, how do you feel the team's at? Um, I think we're there. I don't think we're like tip top shape, you know, peaking right now, but I think we're where we're supposed to be um, with two preseason games under our belts and we'll probably go pretty hard the next couple of days just to make sure we're ready. You know, we have that shape. So I think it's just going to be a process this year. Um, obviously, we don't want to be our absolute best game one. We just want to be pretty good and just continue improving game by game. We're going to head to Zoom now for a couple questions. Sean, can you please unmute yourself and ask a question? Hi, Ali. Sean Schultz with WNBA News. Historically speaking, teams trying to repeat their championships in the W don't do very well. So what's going to be your biggest obstacle to get there? Biggest obstacle biggest for a championship? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, staying healthy. Um, that's number one. I feel like as long as we stay healthy, we have a, a pretty good chance. Obviously, we have to gel and we have to continue having good chemistry and just play at a high level. I think we were able to win that championship because those 10 games we played, it was, you know, there's not a lot of room for error. You have to be really good at what you do. We all have our roles and we just have to stay consistent and be good at what we do. Thank you, Sean. Rafiq, please ask your question. This is Rafiq Gunata, but that's sports talk. I mean, how, how, how much have you enjoyed your first off season as a defending champion for the Chicago Sky? Sorry. It was kind of a sense of relief, just confidence. And every once in a while, just like uh, you want to pinch yourself, like, did we really do that? Like, we did that. So it's kind of a mixture of all those emotions. And then you have that hunger to just play better. You know, I just have it in my mind that we were 16 and 16 and we went on this crazy, amazing run. But I think we all want more. We want to play good in the regular season. We want to uh, be feeling really good going into the playoffs and um, just repeat. But like I said, it was a pretty awesome off season, just knowing what you just accomplished and just feeling that confidence and happiness that you achieved one of your lifelong professional goals. And of course you lost Stephanie Dolson, the, the woman that literally helped you guys get the bucket that put you guys on top of that series clinch in game four. How do you think that will impact and what you guys are doing to like make up for that loss that you had during the off season? Really can't hear anything. How is that going to be without her? Yeah. Um, obviously, there's no replacing her as a person and a player. She's a, a huge positive personality for us. Um, and, you know, she's one of the best, probably the best screen setter in the WNBA. So it's hard to replace that. And just like her decision making, her IQ, uh, it's tough. But um, like I said, Emma being stepping in is definitely a smooth transition and something that will help uh, replace that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali. No problem. Thank you, guys.
just getting better and better learning each game, each practice. Is that something you talk about, like trying to go back to back? Uh, we haven't talked about it at all. I just think we know what's expected, you know, kind of, but we also know it's a long season. Thank you. Hey, Ruthie, you've played overseas in Turkey. Um, curious, what's your sort of stance on now and everything that's happened? Can you say it one more time? I'm sorry. Can I you hear me? Hear. No. You couldn't hear me? No, sorry. You've played overseas in Turkey before. Mm -hmm. um, what's your stance on playing overseas now in the off season, given everything that's transpired over the past few months? Yeah, I mean, I just got back from Italy a few days ago, and I think it's there's ups and downs, of course, from playing overseas, as we've seen in the past few weeks. Um, it sucks to be away from your family. Sometimes it can be dangerous, stuff like that, but it's also the way we make money and, um, you know, we make new friends and try to be open to that kind of stuff. But I think there's lots of ups and downs. Perfect, we'll go to Holly Rowe on Zoom if you wanna unmute yourself and ask a question. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you what you worked on overseas. Like, I know a lot of people so kind of take that opportunity to work on things. What was yours? What I work on? Yes. Um, uh, this year, I just try to work on, you know, my outside game a little more, shooting the ball, being comfortable, handling the ball a little more than previous years in college and, you know, the last two years in Chicago. Thank you, Holly. We'll go to Sean Schultz if you want to unmute and ask your question. Perfect. We'll go to, oh, Sean, are you there? Okay, perfect. We'll go to Eric Wilson if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Ruthie, as always, it is good to see you. Welcome back. Good to see you. So, um, you know, you spent some time away, but I wanted to ask you, when did it set in that you realized that the Chicago Sky and in particular yourself were world champions? At what point did that set in in reality? Can you repeat it? I'm so, At what I point did it, did it set in that you were champions? Um, I think, you know, when the final buzzer sounded, we were all crying and happy and I was just like, wow, it's an amazing feeling and it's so hard to describe. But I think around that time, even waking up the next day, it's like, dang, we really, won this, you know, we really did it. So it took a few days, but it was a great feeling. Thanks, Eric. We'll go back to Holly. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand back down. Sorry. No, it's okay. Thanks, Holly. We'll go to Christos. Please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Ruthie. First of all, have a great season full of health in WNBA. Uh, if you look back and you went your season overseas, what stands out to you about the atmosphere that you show in games in Turkey? What stands out to you about the atmosphere? Um, I think this year in Italy, it was actually a really good atmosphere. The team was really supported by the people in the uh, city, and it was great to just have them. They threw confetti, they had blow horns, they had flags, they were, I mean, amazing fans, actually. So, I mean, last year in Chicago, we had amazing fans, too. So it's kind of similar. Any more questions for Ruthie? I'm sorry to harp on a question, but just hearing you talk about Italy a little bit, I'm curious, sort of, it sounds like you've only been over a few days, but do you have any ideas for how the climate around everything that's going in everything happening in Ukraine and Russia, how did that climate, what was that atmosphere sort of like in Italy around the issue? I don't know if it's different being in Europe compared to uh, The atmosphere around Ukraine and Russia? Just the climate of the topic and how citizens felt talking about it. Yeah, I think, especially when all of it started happening in Italy, they're really, um, they talked about it a lot, actually. Like, you know, my teammates, I remember them coming in and be like, oh my gosh, look at Russia, look at Ukraine, and just, um, all that. So it was actually really interesting to hear their thoughts and stuff. And then talking about like, are you going to go home, Americans, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm blessed to have felt lucky the whole time in Italy and just have an amazing coaching staff and staff that would let me go home if I felt um, unsafe. But they were really were well uh, educated on it the whole time. Hi. How does losing Stephanie Dolson but bringing in Emma Wiesman change, change kind of what your front court looks like this year? Yeah, I mean, it sucks to lose Steph, but she was a great role model and 
off the court, just an amazing person. But I mean, Emma is really talented and I'm just really excited to be able to learn more about her, play with her. And just, um, I think it's going to be really a great season. What have you seen from her in the couple of preseason games so far? Yeah, I mean, she's an amazing basketball player and she's really calm, which is really cool. And just a really good leader. I mean, she talks in practice. She's already helped me out a lot. So I'm really excited. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions for Ruthie? Thank you, Ruthie. Uh, thank you. and Tina here for you guys as well for any questions and then we'll go to Zoom. Um, does anyone in person have any questions for these two or individual? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good, thanks. Glad to hear it. Um, what's been the biggest thing, for both of you, what's been the biggest takeaway in the last couple of weeks in camp so far? Biggest takeaways from camp. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say that the pace of the game is different. So um, everything's a little bit faster. People play a little bit harder. But um, you kind of, when you step on the floor, you kind of get brought up to the level. Like everyone kind of carries each other. But um, definitely the pace, yeah. Yeah, I could, I could agree with her. For me, especially, uh, everything is different. I'm coming from Europe, so... Um, I like the practice, how we work here. So for me, it's like a big experience to experience this, to, to be part of this. And I like uh, how everybody's doing their job and how we feel at the court and to uh, support each other. Like, like, she, like she said, like we carry each other at the court. So, but it is more physical, definitely, than in Europe, yeah. <laughs> and this is also for both of you. Is there anything that uh, James Wade has talked to you about, like what his expectations were for you heading into camp? Um, just to play hard i mean like we're here for a reason obviously like you get invited because of what you bring so um he his instructions are just to play hard and play with passion and um do what it is that he noticed us for and um play great defense get the ball into the hands of our stars and that's the message so yeah that's it yeah. pretty much we know what we what our qualities are, so we, what we can bring to the team, what we can give as a quality. So that's what we are trying to do here. So to help the team to be, to give our best. Hey, Tina, you were just playing in the EuroLeague Championship. What was that like with everything going on in Europe uh, during that time? Sorry, I just heard the EuroLeague Championship. You were playing in the EuroLeague yeah. Championship. What was that like with everything happening from a geopolitical standpoint? Yeah, playing Euroleague for so long time, like the past like six, seven years, for me it's a huge experience, you know. But as I compare now to here, kind of it's different, you know. The pace, like she said, it's different. Like we have also many players from from here, from Women WNBA, to coming there to play, and I play with them, so I have like shared with them like some informations how it's here for them it's strange, and they also need to adjust when they come there. So also when I came here now, I need quite time to, to realize like what is this kind of black basketball, so, um, but yeah, it's huge, it's huge uh, difference, but also like, I, I'm so happy to be here to experience this. So Anneli, obviously this is your first time in an NBA position, or WNBA position, how does that feel being, your first team is the reigning champs, so how much of a great experience could that be for you? Uh, it's, it's an honor, I would say, I am. Um... Just being invited to a WNBA camp itself is a huge tick off my bucket list, something that I've always wanted to do. And uh, um, I feel very privileged to be here. Um, the fact that it's Chicago adds another layer of excitement to it. Um, I feel like I haven't been able to wipe the smile off my face since I got here, <laughs> if I'm honest. But, um, no, it's been really enjoyable. Like, I've really... This experience is a once in a lifetime thing, like especially for the reigning champs as well. Um, it's very exciting.
All right, we'll go to Zoom. Eric Wilson, if you don't mind unmuting yourself and asking your question. Thank you both for your time. I just simply wanted to ask both of you what it would mean to play uh, this season with the sky. Um, what it would mean? I mean, it's pretty exciting. I think you can kind of tell by the energy that we both have, but um, to be able to play with the sky this year would be, again, an incredible opportunity, but not just because of, you know, this city and the team, but because of the players that are, are on this roster like it's a it's a hall of fame roster it's a star-studded roster it's um basketball royalty in a lot of sense so yeah yeah definitely it would be like like a dream came true for me so yeah i i, I cannot um describe how i feel like coming from europe all the way here and uh, playing with such a names and for me this is the best team honestly and i really believe they can achieve a lot and uh this team again can be a champion, you know. So uh, definitely, if I could choose, if someone like say which team you want, I would say yeah. I would go to Chicago. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, Eric. Lisa, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Sure. Welcome to Chicago. Um, I was curious. Uh, how much you guys have followed the WNBA and in, in the past and maybe players you had looked up to and then a also a, a dorky broadcaster question if you each could take the time and say your first and last name for us so we make sure that that we pronounce it correctly sorry I, I didn't quite hear that two part question okay. one pronounce your first and last names for broadcast okay and then two uh, if you look up to any WNBA players Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So my name is uh, Annalene Maley and <laughs> I'm Pina Kreishni. There you go. Um, yeah. Looking up to WNBA players. Well, I obviously being Australian looked up to Lauren Jackson and Penny Taylor. Um, grew up watching them. So, um, and Michelle Timms as well. Um, those would be my three players. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my close friends and uh, one of the players I grew up with and played with her all my life and for my career is uh, Sonia Petrovic, now Sonia Vasic. She was also playing in Chicago Sky a few years ago. So, so she shared some experience and uh, uh, she's in many ways a role model for many Serbian players. So, Thank you, Lisa. Allison Moran, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Allison, are you with us? I'm trying to Moving unmute. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. My apologies. It wouldn't. My own mute wouldn't come off for a second. Ladies, first, welcome. Um, second of all, uh, I wanted to ask um, uh, you. Um, if uh, you had talked to Shyla Heal, who had been back, uh, who had been to the sky and was um, uh, by chance, um, you know, uh, spent a little time with us, um, had you talked to her at all about your about her experiences with the sky? I talked to Shyla. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know Shyla um, quite well, actually. We obviously play against each other, um, but we're both on the uh, Australian national team squad together. So um, she she enjoyed Chicago City. Um, she told me that if I could get a chance to get out and explore. Um, but yeah, no, she had only nice things to say. If that's, is, was that the question? <laughs> okay, yes. cool. <laughs> That was a question. Thank you. Um, what is, uh, and uh, to your partner there, um, what do you feel that um, your experiences so far have prepared you for in terms of the WNBA and making it as a Chicago Sky player? Um, for me, the, the WNBL is a really uh, talented league and we have a lot of WNBA players coming out there over the summer season. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I, we get a little bit of a look in. As Tina said, she's, she, there's a lot of WNBA players that play in Euroleague as well. Um, but we've seen 
you know, some of the talent that the WNBA produces. So I guess uh, our own pers like prospective leagues have put us up to the challenge of uh, stepping into this one. Tina? Definitely, yes. Um, I had a chance, as I said before, to meet so many players uh, playing in Europe with them, in Europe with them. So uh, basically they were, uh, how to say, inviting me to come here to try this, to have this experience. And uh, with some of them, I'm, I'm now really close friends. So they are all happy to, to, for me to have this experience, to try to be, to, to be here. So mm. it helped a lot. And I trusted them yeah. on that side. By Thank you so much, both of you. And good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, ladies. Sweet. Thank you. We're going to answer all most of the questions. No, no. Eva Manuel <laughs> and Masmi here today. Questions on Zoom. Eric Wilson, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question, please. 
Good afternoon, ladies. Thank you so much for your time. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Uh, being that we are getting so close to the home opener, what would it mean for the two of you to be a part of this team as they go into their uh, second season, well, their season as champs? So the home opener, like, what would it mean to go on the season as champs? I mean, it's a great feeling to go in as defending champs. Like you just said it, like, they're defending champs, so you're going to have that chip on your shoulder. Of course, everyone's going to come in and, you know, want to take that from you, but we can't be worried about that. We just got to take it one game at a time and, you know, just play hard and play with each other. Yeah, I think it's going to be, like, very exciting um, to, go, to go out and play uh, at home for the first game. And I think, like, there's going to be a lot of expectations from um, people for us to win, so it's going to be, like, fun and exciting. Anyone else on Zoom have questions for these ladies? Oh, I guess you're free. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to go sparkle. All right, we have Sparkle Taylor here. Hi. So I know you were in camp last year with Sky. Uh -huh. um, what did you learn from that experience last year that you've been able to break uh, this season? Um, just really continue to uh, put your head down and just work hard and, uh, you know, listen and being able to move at a fast pace. Um, been learning to pick up things quick, um, you know, learning their system more quicker, the plays, uh, you know, just really kind of just listening to them, listening to the coach and trying to, um, you know, take in as much as possible and soak in as much as possible and um, apply it more faster. So. Uh, what would it mean, mean to you to make the team? Um, it would mean a lot uh, for me, for my hometown, my family, um, you know, just people who's been following me. Um, it'll be a blessing, you know what I'm saying? It's it's one right now, you know, um, but I'll be an honor. It'll be an honor to play uh, for the sky, to play with, you know, some of um, the legends, the goats um, that's here now. Um, it will mean a lot to me, like a lot. How do you feel about how you played in the preseason games? Um, I feel like I play pretty, pretty solid, pretty good. Um, I try to go out there and do what the coach asks me um, to the best of my ability and give, you know, everything out there on the court. Um, you know, I, it's a learning process for me. It's a learning curve for me. Um, so every day I'm learning something from Coach Wade, from my teammates. And um, it's just been a very good experience for me. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Sean, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Sparkle. Sean Schultz, uh, WNBA News. I was just wondering if any of your teammates in particular have been helpful to you in camp, what they have told you, what that's been like? I, I can't really hear what he says. I still can't Oh, yes. Uh, Courtney Vanderslew, Ezra Stevens, Allie Quigley, really all of them really just been, um, you know, helping me out and helping me figure this thing out and, um, you know, pointing me in the right direction every day. Um, I've definitely learned a lot from Salute, though, running with her um, in practice and how she likes to play and, you know, what she likes to do and what should I do when I'm on the court with her. You know, um, I learned a lot from her. Um, you know, I'm just having fun with her and you know, playing with her, but um, she's she's a, a a leader out there, like at all times. Thank you, Sean. Christos, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask a question. Hey, Sparkle, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you look back, what was the biggest adjustment for you so far in this training camp, coming from uh, NCAA to the WNBA? What was the biggest adjustment for you? And what did you like most about the way that uh, this team practicing so far in this training camp? Biggest adjustment from college to the pros. Uh, that 
everything moves at a super fast pace. Uh, you know, uh, just, you know, working extra hard and getting extra reps in. I'll just say just the pace, everything that, you know, that they do here is way more faster than, you know, in college. Uh, that's just really it, really for me. Thank you so much. So obviously, you know, it's been a pretty, a journey for you out of college. And so what is it, what is your journey since college? What is the Impactful moment to you that got you to this point? Um, really, I came from, you know, UTEP, of course, uh, where I came in as a freshman. Uh, I didn't play as many games as a freshman to my sophomore year, having to lose some weight. Uh, you know, so I've been through, like, different obstacles, but I just, you know, kept my head down and kept working hard. I knew that I'll get to this point if I just keep working hard and never giving up and just really staying focused. And uh, I knew that I'll get to this point. I just didn't know when. Um, so my whole journey just been impactful, you know, all the ups and downs, you know, um, that I've been through. Um, I just never really gave up, you know, some days I cried, some days, you know, um, I didn't want to get up and work out or I didn't want to, you know, do this anymore. I didn't think that would pay off, but, um, I just, just really just kind of kept working hard and kept, you know, self-motivating myself, you know, um, but where I'm from, you know, uh, Flint, um, you just got to really, you know, keep your head up and keep going hard. I come from a, a tough city, so um, I, I take a lot of pride in that. So for me, it just really just keep working hard, just staying patient on this journey, um, believing in God and, and what he has and his plans for my life. Yeah, and also, if you had to say, what is the biggest thing you can bring to this team? What's the biggest what? Biggest, like, the, the best thing that you bring to this team. I'm sorry. I, the I best really, thing. The best thing. Oh, uh, I really, like, um, aggressiveness, um, my physical physical like I'm a physical guard uh I feel like I can score um in many ways uh I feel like my defense um you know just really being physical and, and aggressive and you know whatever they need me to be out there perfect thank you everyone thanks Marco. thank you
Um, anyone in person have any questions for Dana? Dana, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, you know, yesterday we talked about how this team has expectations for itself after you know, there's some people at home in the championship run. Right. 16, 16 in the regular season. Mm -hmm. How much fuel does that give you going into this year with, you know, the It gives us a lot of uh, fuel to our fire, for sure. I would say that we just know what we need to do, and now we're just coming together as a team. We're getting everybody coming back. Uh, we got Candace back, so um, she, she's the engine that makes us go, so we should be good. Yeah, what's it been like? Just I know she's only been here for one practice, but like, mm -hmm. did she set the tone yesterday? Uh, Yes, she always sets the tone, uh, whether that's defensively or offensively. She holds you accountable. Um, she's going to make sure you're doing the right thing. She's going to stay on you, especially when she sees potential in you. So, uh, yeah, she's definitely like the team mom, the captain, everything in one. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Dana. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Dana, how do you think your role can be this year? I think my role will expand with me, uh, making sure I have my feet set, open shots. They're going to have to help off Candace. They're going to have, have to help off uh, Emma, Vandersloot, Quigley, Copper. Like, we have great, talented players. And for me, it's just me being ready to step in at that moment and knock down open shots and take what the defense gives me, whether that's getting to the basket, finding others, or even finding my own shot. I think coaches starting to get more confident in me and more comfortable seeing me out there as much as I can. So... Um, just me just being ready and, and actually taking that leap. What did you do previous to the camp? What did you prepare yourself? Well, first, I wanted to get in the best shape of my life. I lost, uh, I lost some weight. Um, tried to put on some more muscle and just get more lean uh, so I can be able to pick up the ball full court. Um, obviously, I have to be able to tire out the other point guards for when Sloot gets back in the game. So... Uh, that, that'll be my job defensively to be able to lock in on that and then just do whatever else is needed. How excited are you and the team? Mm -hmm. Super excited. I think we're going to have a really good turnout. I think we're going to, I think it's going to be really good. We're going to have a good year and we're super excited for the first game and not to be playing against each other finally. <laughs> We'll go ahead and go to Zoom for some questions. Eric Wilson, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Dana, as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, you talked about some of the changes that you made in the off season. Could you just speak to what are some of the processes were that you did, if you didn't mind expanding upon that? Can you repeat the last part? I didn't get the last part. Just um, could you take us through the process, like some of the changes you said you lost some weight so you could add muscle? You know, what 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 did that look like for an average day for you? OK, well, for me, um, I, I was overseas and overseas. I was doing a lot of running. When I came back, I made sure that I did a lot of running on the treadmill and on the court. My workouts, I was trying to get two to three workouts in a day. Um, I was just really grinding, putting in that work, putting in the time. Um, obviously I was in the weight room as well, trying to get, gain my muscle back because I haven't been lifting as much since I left college. So just getting back in that mindset, getting back into that, uh, into that routine for me was big, but yeah. So just the need to work pretty much. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. We'll go to Sean Schultz. Please unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, Dana. Thanks for your time. I wanted to know what you think going from your rookie to your sophomore season will be your uh, biggest improvement? What did you work on as far as your game skill, in-game skills? I improved uh, mainly, I would say, defensively, being able to uh, ride that player out, not forcing a switch on a post player. I'm 5'6". I don't want to be down there with the post players. 
Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be down there with the post players battling. Like, that's not what I want to do. So for me, just getting into the guards defensively, jumping passing lanes, um, just being more of a presence on the floor. I think last year I was just trying to do the right things and not mess up. But this year I'm more confident. I'm more comfortable. And this year I, I think this is a year for me to take my, my leap and just and just be Dana again. Thank you, Sean. We'll go to Alex, Ozzy. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Never mind. Okay, perfect. We will go to Allison Moran. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Allison. Hi, Dana. Nice to see you back, first of all. And I uh, wanted to find out from you, do you feel pressure coming in as a WNBA champion as part of that championship? Um, and if so, how are you managing that? Do you feel any pressure kind of coming into this season? No, honestly, I feel more motivated than pressure. Um, I think that championship just motivated me more to want to get back to a finals again. So for me, it was just let's do it again. Let's get back in the gym and put that time in again. Let's do everything that we did last year uh, as a team. Um, and just be ready. I don't I don't think I feel any pressure. I don't think we any of us really feel pressure because we're more motivated than anything to do it again. Terrific. Thanks so much. A couple you. last questions here for Dana. We'll go with Rafiq. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Rafiq. This is Rafi Gunat about that sports talk. I just want to know like 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 you, like when you look back at the championship season that you had, like what do you think you could do more for do more this season to be a more of a contributor towards a, a potential 2022 Chicago championship if you make it happen as opposed to last year when you was in your first year at the WNBA. What do you think you can contribute more to this season than you did last year? Um, I think just all around game. I don't think I was uh, Dana last year. I don't think I was myself. I was just trying to play it safe. Um, and this year, um, that's I don't think that would be the case at all. I think I'm going to bring more intensity, uh, Bring, I can bring more scoring to this team. Obviously, we have great scores already, but just adding that to it, um, getting people open shots, getting into the lanes, um, that's pretty much what, what I think I can I can do this year. And I want to get your thoughts on the WNBA honoring Brittany Griner as she's still stuck in Russia for the situation that happened over the offseason. The Brittany Griner situation, your thoughts on um, it's, it's really, really unfortunate. I, I, I'm wishing that she can get from over there and get back here and playing basketball, something that she loves. And she deserves to be back over here uh, playing the game that she loves. So I just hope the situation uh, works out for her. I, I think I hope everything um, goes well. Um, I'm praying for her for sure. And I'm praying for her family as well. Appreciate you saying good luck. Thank you so much. Last question, Xavier, please unmute yourself and ask your question for Dana. You've had quite a whirlwind of a year from being drafted to being traded midseason to winning a championship to now you're joining the Jordan brand family. What do you hope for with this deal? And do you have a favorite pair of Jordans? Favorite well, pair of Jordans and then like your own Oh yeah, that's definitely uh, special for me. I love, I grew up just a Jordan fan period, especially with the Bulls. Um, I always wore his gym shoes. I've been a sneakerhead all my life. So um, now being a part of the Jordan brand family is definitely a blessing for me. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And uh, my favorite pair of Jordans, ah, that's tough. I would say uh, probably the Jordan 4 Off-White, uh, the sales ones. I think those are probably my favorite. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Attendees on Zoom, please make sure to put your affiliate next to your name. Otherwise, we will not be calling on you in the future. Please put your affiliate next to your name. Thank you.
We got Courtney Vandersloot here. Um, we'll go ahead and ask any in-person questions and then we'll head to Zoom. Oh, well, we're, we're excited. We're really happy to be back. Um, obviously, Candace is a huge part of big presence. So when she walks in the gym, the mood changes. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just all good vibes right now. We're trying to work to, to get a roster together to be able to kind of make a run at repeat. Is it easier because there's a four here? I'm sorry, I can't really hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Is it easier since there's a core of players here that maybe we ask you if you can have that type of police in this? Yeah, um, I think so. You know, that was a big part in the off season that we were all going to do it together if we were going to do it. Um, so to have everybody, our core group back, um, familiar faces, you know, we, we know what to expect. We've been in the trenches together. Um, we've been at the peak together. So, you know, it's just, it's like I said, it's just a different feeling. It's a really good, uh, good environment. How do you not allow thinking about competing get into your mind? How do you channel yourself game to game rather than thinking of long term? Well, you know, that's a challenge, obviously. Um, you know, we kind of stopped talking about a championship last year in the middle of the season because we want to really focus on, you know, just playing the best basketball um, that we could play. And I think that's got to be our mindset. Obviously, the goal everyone knows everyone's goal is to win a championship. So it's not just us, but uh, making sure that we're doing it the right way. We're doing it our way um, and just going through the process that it takes. The WNBA is going to have a decal on the whole. At this time, to get her out of Oh, well, it's, it's the top priority. It's so important. Um, you know, we can't let this kind of go into the back of our minds. We got to keep it top of mind for everyone. And I think that's a good reminder. Uh, we want to continue to talk about it, um, make sure that she's being represented and, and fought for, um, and to make sure that we're all doing our part to do whatever it takes to get Brittany home. Is there enough coverage outside of the WBA? Uh, you know, I think that you could, you, you, there's never enough. You know, it's, you could always do more, um, whatever it takes. Obviously we want everybody, Brittany to be on everybody's mind, um, no matter where they are coming from or so, uh, you know, most top priority, most important thing is just to get her home. Hey, Brittany, going off of, uh, talking about Brittany Reiner, can you sort of talk about your relationship with her, you know, how long you guys have known each other for and how your relationships progress? Um, well, we've known each other since she came into the league, you know, but we've played in Russia together for four years. So, I mean, that's my friend. She's more than just a teammate to me. Um, so for to see her, to have her go through this has been, you know, absolutely heartbreaking. And, um, you know, I just really, it just really was a hard time and I just want her home. And then can you sort of walk me through the exact moment you found out what had happened to her? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we were obviously in Russia. We had come back from a, a break and Brittany had not been there, which isn't out of the ordinary for us because sometimes, you know, with testings or flights, um, everybody kind of is on their different schedule. Uh, but then we had our, a meeting, a team meeting with our GM and he told us that, you know, she had been picked up at the airport. And so, you know, I, I can't even put into words the, the, that moment, learning that, um, you know, just how, how we felt for for Brittany, how scared we were for Brittany. Um, and, you know, it was from then on, basically, you know, just wanting her to be, hoping she's okay mentally and physically, just hoping she's being taken care of. And, um, you know, but we have the same agent, so I've been able to kind of get, at least stay a little bit in the know about that. And, you know, she has the right people working for her um, and they're, they're doing everything they can to get her home. Only through lawyers. So she hasn't been able to have direct conversation. Um, so obviously Steph was such a big part of her team last year and you had such a chemistry with her and just, Emma's a very good player, but she's a little bit different style. How is that going to adjust with you? Because you and Steph really had a lot of goals. Really, you did a lot together. So how is that adjustment? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a big piece that we're going to be missing, um, especially me, individual. Like you said, I rely a lot on Steffi's playmaking, her screen setting, um, her rolling. So, it, but, um, you know, we just have to adjust. We, Like you said, we signed Emma. She kind of plays a different role, but can impact the game in, in very similar ways. Um, she's just, she's she can pass, she can shoot. She could be on the low block. She's, she's a good screener. So, um, you know, it was a big, it was a big, sign for us once we knew that Stephanie wasn't going to be back. Um, it was a big time, big thing to replace, but I think Emma can do the job. Yeah, I mean, it's it's everything. We've been working for that for, for years now. Um, you know, I think it's a little overdue, but we're happy to have that exposure. Um, you know, we, we always say that we think what, once when people see us, they fall in love with us. So it's just about getting getting eyes on us and being able to be to a, see a game and, and maybe they'll watch it on TV and decide they need to come and see us in person. Uh, and that's where we really can expand the game. We'll head to Zoom for a couple questions. Sean Schultz, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question, please. Uh, Courtney, Sean Schultz with All Things WNBA here. Uh, you mentioned Brittany Griner, and I just wanted to know, with your friendship with her, what has she taught you as a person, as a friend, as a, a professional? What has Brittany Griner taught you as a friend, as a professional, in your friendship? Oh, well, she's, her presence is just unmatched. Um, you know, when she gets into the, the gym, you kind of, she just has this presence about her. She, people are just drawn to her. Everyone loves BG. I'm telling you everyone that I've ever come across that knows BG on a personal level is just loves her. Her, she's so kind hearted. She's, uh, you know, a, a team player, a really just a good person to be around and have on your team. Um, and so, you know, we definitely missed her. Her presence was missed when she was, when she was not there. Um, so, and it's something that cannot be replaced. Thank you, Sean. Going to Alex from On Her Turf, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey there, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, a follow-up on that, you know, WNBA players like yourself are so outspoken whenever they see anything wrong in the world. How tough was it to have to be so careful about what you were saying about Brittany Griner, just given the situation that she's in? How delicate kind of was the situation with Brittany and talking about it? I mean, so Well, it was very delicate, you know, especially in the first couple of weeks, uh, we were told that it was not in her best interest to be able to, to talk about it. And we trusted that we trusted that our team, um, our, you know, the legal, the legal, the lawyers and everything was doing the right thing, what they could. Um, and we were kind of just hoping that that was going to be enough, that our silence would help um, to get Brittany out of there. That was our top priority. That's all we cared about. We didn't want a big media storm about it or to, to talk about it. We just wanted her out. Um, and that's what we believed to be the right thing at the time. So it was hard. It was difficult. Thank you so much, Eric. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Courtney, it is always good to see you. Um, you know, you go from being the hunter to being the hunted. So has the mentality changed with regards to this season? Has your mentality changed in regards to defending your title? I don't think so. Uh, you know, obviously we go into every season. The, the ultimate goal is to win a championship. Um, you know, we know what it takes now. We have, I guess, a, a different mentality in terms of, you know, what, what goes into it and what's the right, right things to do, the wrong things to do. Um, but, you know, we're, our top priority is playing the best Chicago Sky basketball we can. Um, and I think that if we do that at a really high level, then the rest will take care of itself. Thank you so much, Eric. Last question, Ralph Please unmute yourself and ask your question, please. This is Ralph Peek with nothing but that sports talk. I want to know, like, what's the championship mentality that the team has brought together during the offseason and training camp going into this your season opener against the Los Angeles Sparks? Mentality, energy, training camp. Training camp. Oh, well, it's been a, you know, a really different thing for me because I haven't been in a training camp since my rookie year. So, um, you know, it was, I kind of had like second year nerves going in, um, but the energy is unbelievable. Um, you know, everybody has such, they come in with such high 
energy and enthusiasm about this season and making the team. We have a really good competitive camp, which I think has been awesome. Um, you know, I've tried to kind of come in and I've been in and out a little bit, trying to stay healthy and build back up. Um, but you know, just to see these girls come in and compete. Um, and it really, I think it really is going to be a good stepping stone for us heading into the regular season and, um, you know, the rest of the, the rest of the way. And I want to get your thoughts on the WBA honoring Brittany Grinder as she's still fighting through the situation that she suffered over the off season. And she's still detained up until at least the middle of May. Another comment on that just a <laughs> Um, well, it's our top priority. You know, we want, we want Brittany home. It's the only thing that, that we care about. Um, you know, she's such a, such an important part of this league. Um, and I, I you know, our hearts just break for her. We're trusting the, the trusting that everybody's doing the right thing and they're, they're working hard to get her home. Appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Brittany. Thank you. Next, for her presser, um, we'll start with in-person questions, and then we'll go to Zoom if you guys have any other further questions. Any questions in person for Emma? Oh, my God. Bruce. Hi, Emma. Hi. Um, so you had a huge summer internationally, um, third in European championships, uh, playing in Belgium's first Olympics, and being the leading scorer in the Olympic tournament, uh, what did that mean to you? For me, it's always an honor to like play for national team. Um, I love basketball, but doing it for your own country with the people you actually grew up with, it's always special. Uh, and not so much to you know stats, it's just the feeling of being there. It feels like home, even if we play like, I don't even remember the European championship but in Japan. Um, it's it's always like meaning a lot, and I'm always happy to be back there. Yeah. Do Do you think that that success may have an impact on the next generation of girls playing basketball in Belgium? Only for the past few years, um, we've seen an evolution of like um, interest, media interest, and um, in the very beginning, we were there. Um, there was maybe like 20 people in the gym. Now we have like sold out in one day. So that already on itself, it's a sign that really people love basketball, love women's basketball. And there's always like so many kids, uh, more and more people recognize us. So I really think that all the results we had in the past few years, it has a res result. And little kids are texting us or telling us like, we want to do the same. We want a dream. We, we want to live that dream. So it's, it's cool to know that, you know, we're actually setting an example and showing people that it's possible. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Emma. Uh, Courtney just spoke to us and said when she found that when you guys all found out was overseas that Brittany was detained, everyone was instructed to be silent um, about it. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, sorry. So Courtney just spoke to us and said that when, when your team overseas found out that Brittany was detained, everyone was instructed to be silent. What was sort of that period like when you weren't supposed to talk about it was that? you're not supposed to talk about it with your teammates or just not, what was, does that make sense? Uh, we were talking about it with the teammates. It was, we were just making sure um, we kept it for ourselves in the team because uh, we didn't know what the impact was going to be if it came out. Um, I think we still don't. Um, so it's just, you know, we talk about it because it's our friend, it's our teammate. So we have to talk about it in order to like to process the whole thing. And who instructed you guys not to talk about it? Uh, like the team said, it was better to not okay. Thank you. bring it out, which is kind of what we stood behind too. 
So obviously, I'm a young championship experience, 2019 with the Mystics. Um, what do, you, do you see any similarities and similarities and differences between the nucleus of that team and the nucleus of you know this team headed into the season? Uh, I think this team is very similar uh, in in terms of like how they play. Uh, I always think the team that plays best together as a team wins. Um, obviously, uh, you have to stay healthy and everything, but you can have the best team on paper with all the names, but if they don't play together, uh, you're not going to win the championship. And I think over here, that's what we saw last year and what we're going to try to bring this year as well. Like, you know, move the ball all together and bring some beautiful basketball as well. On the court, how do you think your game fits in with all of you know, the key pieces? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think your game fits in well, with all of the key pieces here? Uh, not everybody's here yet, so it's kind of hard like, to say anything that's going to happen this season. Uh, I'm still learning to play together with um, some of the teammates. I know Ali and Slude are already very good, of course. Um, so that's just fun to you know, play in a different team with, with them. Um, I've had one practice with Candice, and so far like, I can tell it's going to be really easy to play with her because she just reads the game so easy. And um, I feel like we can just communicate we're still going to be on the same level like in terms of how we see uh what we want we'll head over to zoom now eric wilson if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question please i appreciate your time i i just wanted to ask you being a part of this team and knowing what uh the team is playing for which is another championship what aspect of your game is very important that you bring to the table what aspect game is important to bring to the season to defend the title? Um, I think I just try to fill in, uh, you know, also moving the ball, uh, finding other open players that have that passing and, you know, like the shooting, uh, place an inside game. I don't think it's only one, one thing that's going to help the team. Uh, I just, you know, try to make the team even better. Thank you, Eric. We'll go ahead to Sean. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, I'm uh, Sean Schultz with All Things WNBA. Uh, this being your second WNBA team, what has that change been like for you? What's the biggest difference? The biggest difference in the teams that you played in, played with in the WNBA? Uh, different players. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what I think, uh, you know, basketball, um, if you keep it simple, it's going to be the same everywhere. Uh, I mean, it's different players in terms of like Sleuth, like best passer in, in the world right now. Uh, you have Candace like being a legend. Um, it's just the style I'm going to play here compared to DC is still going to be the same because that's my way of playing and who I am. That's why they took me. Um, and I think the championship team Sky last year compared to Washington DC was not very different in terms of like how they approach every game, how they approach the playoffs. Um, and you could see all, all of them having like the same goal and the same like um, motivation and same focus. And I think that's what you need in, in during the season and especially during the playoffs. Um, so I think that's what I, what I saw in the sky and what I saw in the Mystics, like what really made a difference uh, for them to win the championship. Thank you so much. Last question, we'll go to Allison Moran. Please unmute yourself and ask your question, Allison. Hi, Emma. Welcome to Chicago, first of all. Um, I wanted to find out, um, has James Wade talked to you in terms of uh, different aspects of your game or anything that, uh, any helpful hints that he's given you since you've been here? Has Coach talked with you about, you know, aspects of your game and how you know, play your game? Going into this season? So, to get better? Yeah, he was like, has Coach talked to you just about your game? Uh, well, I've, I've known coach for a while now. Um, he was my assistant coach in, in uh, ICAT uh, for quite some time. So I don't think he really had to introduce the game to me or, uh, you know, himself to me and how he is as a coach. Because 
I've talked to Alien Stewart obviously about that, but I don't think he's very different. He, he's grown in, in like his coaching and I grew, grew in my game. But I think we just keep on building. Uh, we already have that confidence relationship. Uh, and he knows that I want to get better on my game. So he gave me those um, like opportunities, like extra practice or individual practice. So he knows what I like and I know what he likes. So I think that's what me, what's making it easy for me to like fit in in this team. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Last question, we'll go to Christos. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. This hey, will be the yeah. last question for us. Hey, I'm Chris Ostalas, the Negris. Hope you're doing well. Uh, going into the season, and what did you like most playing this team? And what did you see about your partnership with Candace about next, about this season? What do you like most about playing with this team so far and your relationship with Candace right now? Uh, it's just been fun, you know. Um, People always say preseason is so hard and you have to prove yourself. But over here, it's been really fun and everybody's been so nice and welcoming. Um, I've only had one practice with Candice, but, you know, it feels like a little longer already. I'm not going to say it feels like we've been playing together for a year, but it's just high level and professional. And um, I'm looking forward to her, like learn so much from her, from Candice. Um, and, you know, like try to find that um, relationship that you can have on the court, you know, without speaking too much, but you just find each other automatic. So all those um, automatic things I'm looking forward to like build during practice and throughout the whole season. Thank you so much, Emma. Thank oh. you all. We're going to have GM slash head coach James Wade be next. Um, we'll start with any in-person questions, and then we'll go to Zoom. Any in-person questions so far? Can I hear me? James, everything starts on Friday. So if you have some tough decisions between now and then, Oh, uh, it's going to be difficult. Well, we have some capable players, and we know that you know with with the roster sizes the way they are and the talent that's the influx of talent that is coming to the league. Uh, teams are going to have to make some difficult decisions, and so what we're looking for is not just the you know not just the level of play, but also the chemistry that comes along with you know building around the players that you have and complimenting those players. So it's going to be a, a lot of the tough decisions, not just for myself, but for the rest of the GMs and coaches in this league as well. And we're probably going to have some players that can act, that are actually WNBA players that are left without jobs for the moment. It seems like this camp has been very competitive for those players trying to make the roster. How has it been to really see this thing happen? So it's been nice to get a chance to coach these players. Um, some of the players that you're you're probably not going to be able to coach in the immediate future, and you just want to you know help them in any way you can as far as uh, getting their dreams of making it to this league. Uh, but it's always it always comes with a a balance of you have to you know find the talent that you need to you know and and try to build toward the season at the same time. So it it can be a little challenging, but uh, it's a part of the job. When you start on Friday, you start as defending champions. Yeah. How do you end the season being champions? Um, by just, you know, forgetting the championship as much as possible as far as where we are, but just taking from the experience that took us to get there and knowing and having an acknowledgement amongst each other that we know it's going to be that much tougher. Uh, but we have that experience. We know it's going to help us, but it's something that you have to use in those important moments where you need those. There's a there's a bigger issue right now. What 
I think, you know, the WNBA is trying to do a good job of bringing awareness to the situation. Um, the U.S. government is doing a good job of, of trying to negotiate and, and trying to build on, you know, her uh, getting her home. Um, we, we have people doing what they need to do. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's our job individually to just continue to bring more awareness um, and just to continue to, you know, have her in our thoughts and prayers and to not, you know, uh, let whatever distractions of life or distractions of the season or, you know, whatever happened, uh, make us forget about the person and, and who she is and how important she is, not only to the WNBA, but uh, to, to our society in general. Um, she's a sweet person. I, I, I had the, you know, um, the fortune of, of being able to coach her for three years uh, in Russia and, and we've become very close. So um, she's consistently in my thoughts and prayers and as well as my families and as well as our team. So we're just going to continue to try to bring awareness to the situation and hope, you know, we can bring her home where she has a level of comfort and be around her family and around her team and things of that nature. Hi, Coach. Uh, you have the challenge of not having your full complement of players due to overseas commitments to start the year. How do you approach uh, the roster in, you know, in the interim? Uh, we just have to, you know, be as – uh, open-minded as possible, uh, as creative as we can be, and, you know, try to build chemistry in any way that we can. We, you know, we have important players that aren't here, but we also have some players that are here that can hold down the fort. So, um, you know, we, we, we're going to miss the players that we have, and, and hopefully we could just, you know, try to build on as much as we can. It's challenging, but, you know, we're not the only team that's in that, you know, situation. Uh, so hopefully we have enough experience and enough talent that, you know, that can hold down the forward until they get back. And then uh, you had some key additions this off season with uh, Misaman and Oliman. Uh, what do they bring to the table and how do they change the roster and maybe compare to last year? Uh, I th you know, I think it, it gives us two more playmakers, uh, playmakers that, you know, uh, love to pass the ball. I think, the last time they were playing in WNBA, both averaged five assists or more a game. I think Julie Allen was second in the league in assists. And I think um, Emma was the leading passing big in the league um, in 2020, the last time she played. So it gives us uh, other points of attack. Both of them can shoot the ball very well. Uh, and they have a chemistry amongst themselves that because they play together. And uh, both of them have played with multiple players on our roster. So that, that makes it a little bit more easier and uh, the fact that they're high IQ players, it helps us out a ton. Thank you. Hey, James, you've mentioned a little bit, but you have a lot of players on the team with close relationships with Brittany. You yourself do. You know, do you have to take, I guess, the first question would be, how prevalent have those discussions been about or between you and your players? Have you guys talked about it at all? And then, you know, how are you going to approach the issue as the season goes on? You know, what would it look like if all the stuff? Um, I mean, we've had discussions. Um, some of our players actually played with her this season uh, at the moment that she was uh, being detained. And uh, it, it weighs heavy on their heart. Um, but, you know, it's bigger than basketball at this, at this point. And um, we never want to see her situation as a distraction. It's the thing that is probably the the priority for us as far as our thoughts of uh, when she comes home, I think everybody will feel at peace. Uh, so uh, it's something that has to be a constant uh, communication. Uh, and, you know, whatever comes with basketball is kind of secondary at that point, uh, because um, I think when you take out the competitions and all that, um, everybody understands how hard it is to play in this league how hard it is to be a, a person that can, that carries a team in this league. And uh, so we're all a family uh, up to a point and we're, you know, we're all happy when everybody's at peace. And so now we see that she's in a situation that's difficult. I think it weighs on everyone. Uh, but as long as it continues to weigh on us together, it can make us stronger. So uh, we're going to continue to speak up and, and just try to do the right thing and try to follow the direction of, of how we're guided to 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 get her home so um that's that's my main purpose is to get her home so if i have to say more i'll say more if i have to say less i'll say less um but you know i think our team and and this league is going to do whatever it takes uh and, and, until she's home so james obviously it's so hard to repeat as a champion and you have a different team so 
How are you playing on having this team evolve from last year in order to be a title contender again? Um, I think we just have to, you know, I think we have to just um, come with a with mindset, a hungry mindset, I guess. That's a good question. I get, you kind of caught me off uh, guard, but uh, come with a hungry mindset that, you know, we know that teams are, are going to uh, have an, a target on us and, and, you know, we just have to respond. Uh, I, I think we have to take it day by day. I don't think we come in it as we're going to repeat or anything like that. Uh, we know what kind of team we have. We know the qualities that we have. And um, we just have to, you know, play to those qualities. We're going to Zoom for some questions. Alex from On Your Turf, please unmute and ask your question for Coach. Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time. Um, Apologies if I missed this at the beginning, but one, can you just confirm that the Sky will have 11 players, not 12 on the roster due to the salary cap? And can you also just speak about, um, you know, we've seen some shocking cuts already today across the league, just what that means in terms of, you know, some of the players that get left behind. Yeah. If you can confirm that yeah. it's being cut and then, or if the roster being cut down from 11 to 12, and then like there's been a lot of cuts just throughout the league and how that would affect the side. Uh, well, yeah, our, our roster is going to have to be cut to 11. Um, I think more of the, you know, um, teams that have the veteran players, they, they're going to probably be at 11. Um, we saw that they had a lot of cuts. We knew that they were going to have a, a lot of cuts to, today and tomorrow. And, um, you know, especially with a lot of players overseas and having to be on the waiver wire for 48 hours and all this stuff. So uh, we, we're, we're taking note of it, but it's, it's just difficult to implement uh, players into your roster, especially when you've been through two or three weeks of training camp. So um, we're, we're going to try our best. We're going to pay attention to everything, but uh, our focus is on the sky and how we can how we can make the best and most complimentary team as possible. I hope that answered your question because I really didn't hear you, but she did a good job of repeating what she said. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Eric Wilson. Eric, please unmute and ask your question for Coach. Coach, I just wanted to know uh, what it feels like to be back in Chicago, knowing that uh, the pressure is on to get another ring. Uh, it feels good. It feels good to be back here. Um, it honestly, like the pressure, um, I, I put so much pressure on myself, Eric, that um, I don't feel anybody else's. So um, it's going to be a constant pressure whether we have won it or not. And, you know, I just, I'm here to win. So um, I can win whatever in a row or not win. I'm going to have the same mentality. So that's where, that's where I am. Thanks, Eric. We'll go to Rafiq. Please unmute and ask your question for Coach. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. I want to pick up for what Eric Wilson asked you. Like, like, how does it feel to finally be in the position you are this season coming up as the team to be, as opposed to being the the, the ship last year? <laughs> um, it feels good to be the team to beat, I guess, because that means you won. Uh, but we're never hunted. We're always hunting. Thank you so much. We'll go to Allison Moran. Please unmute and ask your question. Hi, James. It's good to see you back here. Hey. Hey. Like Hey, okay, glad you heard that. My question for you is uh, somewhat like Rafiq and, and Eric, but um, in terms of the roster you have and the difficult decisions you're going to have to make in the next few days, um, what uh, uh, can you assess your level of confidence in this team on a one to 10 scale, one being not confident and 10 being confident? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, Everybody will tell you that I'm a pretty confident person. So I've, I've had a 11 confidence since I've gotten here um, since 2019. So I know we didn't win it every year, but I, I've been very confident that we could since 2019. Um, has nothing to do with us winning the year before. It's just 
Um, I have no other way to be. I guess it's in my DNA. So, yeah. Last so couple questions. Sorry, please continue. Okay, I, I was just going to say, so does that mean that you're a 10 on confidence level? 11. 11. I like it, James. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Next question, we'll go to Holly Rowe. Please unmute and ask your question for Coach. Hey, Coach, I wanted to see what has changed in your life since winning the championship. What was life like overseas? Were people proud of you? Just give us some personal anecdotes of how cool it was to, to get that done. And then I have one more question to follow up after. Well, I have, I have more respect for people, for one. After winning? Yeah, just have more respect for people in general, I guess. Yeah. And then... And then Emma had mentioned that she and Candace had some immediate um, chemistry. What, what have you seen from those two? Felt like they've been playing together a long time, she said. I couldn't hear. What have you seen between Candace and Emma so far in the couple practices? I mean, it's been great. You know, you have two playmakers, um, two post players that can make plays and not just for themselves, but for the team. So uh, it's been it's been good so far, um, and you know that's something that we we you know we expect to carry over into the season. Thanks, Holly. Last question for Coach. We'll go to Noah. Please unmute and ask your question. Hi. Um, with Dana Evans kind of coming into year two and knowing the system from last year, what have you thought of her play through training camp and preseason? Thoughts on Dana Evans through. Oh, wow. I mean, she's been, uh, I don't want to say a pleasant surprise, but uh, she's really come in with a chip on her shoulder. And you can see the improvement from year one to year two. And so she's she's someone that we, you know, we we know that when, when we got Julie, uh, a lot of people expected that, hey, you know, you, you, they probably don't have the same role for Dana, but th that wasn't the case. You can, you can never have too many point guards that can, that can do good things. So uh, we wanted her to come in and, and just play well and, and show us, you know, um, her potential and what she could do. And uh, she's, she's really shown that. And, and we're really like, you know, I wouldn't say surprised, but we're pleased with where she is right now. Uh, and you can see, like, I think she was second in, in the league in, in assists per game. Uh, during the preseason uh, because she's, you know, we've asked her to like be more of a creator as, uh, as well as a shot maker. And so she's done a, a really good job of that and, 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 and defending. So uh, we like Dana uh, and, you know, it's probably, um, you know, one of the best moves I've made as far as uh, drafts and, and stuff since I draft so bad uh, and, and getting her. Uh, but, you know, having Ruthie here, her and Ruthie here has really been like really good for us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, coach. We'll have Azari Stevens and Candace yeah. Parker next. Thank you. All right, we have Candace Parker here up next for availability. We'll go with in-person.
question first for Candice, and then we'll go over to Zoom. Um, any in-person questions for Candice? The main questions is being asked of the ladies and James is about what we can write. I know that we're thinking of the challenge of the courts, there's a lot of things, but what goes through your mind thinking about what she's going through and the impossible task it is trying to get her back? I mean, obviously, the main concern is getting her back safe. Um, you know, I obviously reflect as a mom and as a family member, I can't imagine. So I think just showing support as much as we can, but ultimately just trying to get her back. And the news today um, is positive, but, you know, I think it's, we can show our support. We can put a decal on the floor. We can do all those things. But I think the main purpose in all of that is to get her home safe. What went through your mind when you heard about her? What was, you know, your process thinking about what she's going through? I mean, you can't imagine, you know, um, but like I said, I, I reflect as a mom and as a, as a family member, I mean, it's bigger than basketball. It's about getting, you know, getting back here and into, you know, back home safe. So you mentioned the news today with the news today, are you guys, you know, are you supposed to be more vocal? Are you, now that you're able to be more vocal about it, are you guys trying to put an emphasis on being as outspoken as possible about her? Or sort of what's your approach just in terms of talking about Brittany Public? I mean, I, I don't, I don't think any message has come out of, that's changed anything today. I mean, I think the WBA is, you know, obviously the decal and supporting causes and things like that, but ultimately, like getting her back, I mean, into the States. And I think just in terms of what's the news that came out today is promising, but I don't know if anybody will be satisfied until she's back. And so Emma and Courtney kind of mentioned when they found out the news uh, while they were overseas that they were instructed not to talk about it publicly. And so, so that was sort of the thing you got my last question. And so I guess my question for you is, you know, where, you know, before were you, did you have any hesitancy in talking about it because you knew that and sort of, you know, how does that then I can only deal with today. And to be honest with you today, it, if it's my family member, then, you know, I'm doing everything I can from a legal standpoint to get her back. And I think that that's what it comes down. We can put the decals on the floor, we can support causes, but ultimately it's about physically her being back in the States. And then can you just sort of talk about your relationship with her? I think you played overseas with her for one season. No, I've never played. Okay. So, Candice, obviously you took a lot of time before, you know, deciding you're going to play again this season. What was the main reason that got you back here? I mean, I think ultimately after every season, you, you reflect on it, you know, and I think um, it's never whether I can play games and whether I can, you know, want to do this it's off season like am i gonna prepare for the season like i know i need to and am i gonna dedicate to come in early for practice and lift and as you get old you realize you have to do more things to prepare for the game and um i think that was a decision i made with my family i mean you know every season is its own and you know i'm happy to be back i also wanted to ask about your moment with uh Aaliyah boston and say can't just her love you girl to have the national championship and just kind of what you felt that meant to just how, you know, that moment because Leah Boston is, you know, a rising star in the league and also just how that game got a lot more TV. I think it had like the most the high, highest watch game for women's in a while. So can you just talk about that? No, it's super special. Um, it was my first NCAA women's final four in quite some time. And so to be a part of that moment and especially my daughter was there um, to share that and, it means a lot, you know, to be able to watch basketball at its highest level and to see where the women's game is growing to. And it's in good hands with the young stars that are coming up. Candace, uh, you just kind of talked about it earlier, but are you kind of on a year to year kind of thing when it comes to, to playing next year, just kind of go decide. I've always been on a moment to moment. I've learned very early 
um, when you plan for stuff and, you know, I want, I want my heart to be in it. And I know how much energy and effort and how much sacrifice from a family standpoint as well, um, that goes into playing. And I just want to make sure that I'm mentally and physically ready for every season. Because one thing I'll say from the get-go, I will never cheat the game of basketball. I won't cheat it. Uh, it's done so many, so many positive things for me and it's taken me so many places and relationships and memories and all of those things. So I will never cheat the game. And I think every year I have to ask myself if I'm willing to sacrifice for it. Okay, one more just different one. Um, as far as with the Britney situation, what's going on in Russia, just basically in general, how much does that change kind of how you think WNBA players' plans are going to be now for the offseason? playing overseas? I played overseas for 10 years. Um, I think all of us hope that we're able to have the choice to stay abroad. I mean, stay home and not have to go abroad. But that is a choice that, you know, I made because I know that I would make significantly more going overseas. Um, and my family is taken care of as a result of that now. So um, I don't know if my decision would have made been any different given the circumstances. Um, and I think that's an individual decision that everybody has to make. That's totally Z, like loud as all get out. Totally Z, sorry. In LA, you very nearly won back-to-back -back championships. Is there anything you can take from that 2017 season and apply to this year in terms of what it means to be a defending champion and, and try to go back to back? I think every season is its own season. And um, sometimes you think that like, because it would be so magical if it worked out that it's automatically gonna work out and it isn't. And I think that when you try to back to back, it's not back to back, it's, it's a new championship for that team and that season. And so you treat it like that. And I think in 2017, we treated it like a back to back championship and um, we missed the moment. I think today, you can get better tomorrow, you can get better. And you never know if that preparation is going to come through in a game four, like it did last year. So um, I think we just have to be ready for new roles and new experiences. And it's a whole nother season. And I think when you try to repeat, you think it's going to be the same thing and it's not. Thank you. Yeah. We'll go ahead and go to Zoom questions for Candace. Uh, Eric Wilson, do you mind unmuting and asking you questions, please? Uh, first off, Candace, congratulations on the newest addition to your family. And then my question was basically, what is the new barrier that you are going to break this season? What's the new barrier? Uh, so everybody's, you know, watching winning time right now. Uh, they're not got as far as Pat Riley, but I, I read Pat Riley's book. Um, and he talks about like the disease of more and how when you have success, like everybody comes back wanting more individually and not wanting to sacrifice and not wanting to do the things that you did previously to win a championship. And I think that that's kind of the barrier that we're gonna have to talk about and have to overcome uh, is, you know, there's a reason why there hasn't been a repeat champion in 20 years. And I think that it's because of that. It's so hard in the WNBA anyway, but then also with that, um, you know, every year. So I think that's, you know, that's our job is to, to, to try to overcome that. Last few questions for Candice. We'll go to Zachary Draves. Please unmute and ask a question. Hi, Candace. Uh, you obviously have accomplished so much throughout the course of your career, and uh, this past season's championship just added to your legend. Um, I'm just wondering, as we head into the season, are you more optimistic about the future, not just for the Chicago Sky, but for the future of the sport as a whole, given the intense in, uh, growth and attention? I think my first media day, um, I was asked like what my desire in my career was, and it was to, to grow the game of basketball, like those that grew it for me. Um, I think about Cynthia Cooper. I think about having the opportunity to play with Tina Thompson and Lisa Leslie and Delisha Milton and Tisha Penichero and the list goes on. And I think that they left the game better for me than I came into it. And they, they left it better when they left. And, um, that's my generation's job. And I, I hope we've done that. 
Um, you know, I, I, I do want to talk about Sylvia Faust because we're in the same draft class and she's come out and said this is her last year. And we battled at LSU and Tennessee against each other for championships, battled in the WNBA for championships. And um, I think she's one of those players that has definitely left the center position better because she's been a part of the WNBA. So I think there's a number of legends that have done just that, and we have to continue to push it forward. Last question for Candace. Last question for Candace. We'll go to Rafiq. Please unmute yourself and ask your question for Candace. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. How does it feel to have the big Chicago Sky, the team to beat, as you guys are trying to go for the goal, win a championship, and you're going for your third ring in your WBA career? Say the first part again. How does it feel for you what? Guys going into the season as defending champs and pressure. Or something. Uh, it's definitely easier to be the, the hunter than the hunted. That's why there's never, there hasn't been a repeat champion in 20 years. Um, we realize we have a target on our back and we're going to have to play through that all year. But at the same time, I think when you're going in as a whole, you're trying to defend a championship, but day to day, it's the same, you know, it's the grind of trying to get better every day. And I think that's where we have to narrow our focus is not think about the big picture and not suck during the regular season. Cause we sucked last year. We were 16 and 16. We were terrible. So, but you I think did win the championship. Yeah, but you can't like this. Isn't like a you know feel good movie. Like it's not gonna happen again. You can't go 16 and 16 and win a championship. It just that's like, what is it? Like you're telling me there's one in a million, one in, you know one in a hundred, one in a million. Like, no, nah, that's it. So. All right, I understand. Yep. Thank Enjoy you. Season. Thank you. Thanks. 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 It's called Spade to Spade. You suck last year. You guys are being nice. You won the series. Azari Stevens will be next to round up our media. Thank you. Any questions for Azure? You can please raise your hand. Thank you. Do you have any questions on Zoom for Azure? Thank you.
Do we have any questions for Azure on Zoom? <laughs> Eric Wilson, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question, Azure. This is like. Azure, always good to see you. Uh, just with everything coming together right before you start the season, and now Candace is back in the building. What's been the what's been the atmosphere like? What's been what? The atmosphere. Hold on, can you turn on the like? <laughs> I can't hear. Um, it's been great. Obviously, we're excited for everyone as they return. Um, so having Candace back has been really good, really fun. Um, we're waiting for Kai to get back and we're just excited as everyone returns. It's just a great feeling of our team coming together and us getting ready for the season. Thank you, Eric. We'll go to Christos. Christos, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Azure, have a, have a great season, first of all. What did you make, what gives you confidence going into this season that you have another successful season with the team? What gives you confidence about going into this season? Um, I think just experience like last year was my first year playing really in the playoffs um, and obviously getting all the way to the finals and playing heavy significant minutes in the finals and in the playoffs so just to be able to get that experience there's nothing to really replace it um, to just be in those moments those live moments playing against the best in the world um, so yeah Thank you, Christos. Allison Moran, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Allison. Hi, Azure. It is good to see you back in Chicago this year. And um, talk to me a little bit about the pressure that you feel, if any, coming back as a WNBA champion and um, how you feel you need to raise the bar uh, in terms of yourself and your game this season. Um, I don't really feel a lot of pressure. I mean, obviously, like, it, there's a little bit, I guess, um, because we won last year, so we know that teams are going to want to beat us. But, um, I mean, I feel like we kind of had some of that last year because we were picked to win last year. So um, I just try to approach every day with the mindset of getting better than I was yesterday. Um, and that's really helped me to stay locked in on my game um, and improving in all areas of my game. And that's really all I'm focused on. Obviously, I want to win again. So whatever I need to do to give the team the best chance of that is what I'm going to do. And that's just how I approach everything and how I've been approaching everything since I've been a pro. Terrific. Um, one last question is um, on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel in repeating as champ? How confident do you feel as like repeating this year? Oh, um, I feel pretty confident. Um, I felt confident last year. I feel confident on every team I'm on. <laughs> Since I was in Dallas, I felt confident. Since the bubble, I, I thought we had a chance of winning, obviously, until, you know, we had injuries and stuff. But I always feel confident in my teammates and whatever team I'm on. Um, so I feel confident. I feel really confident. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Any more questions for Azure on Zoom? Thanks, Azure. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you everyone for joining our media day availability on Zoom today. Um, we'll be logging on soon. Thank you. Thanks for joining.